look at this. Well, we've got a delightful little machine here today on blurbs, greetings and things. So I just picked this up from an LGR viewer named Robert, who is local to me here in the uh, area that I live. And yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a Macintosh Color Classic. Uh, classic machine, very collectible machine from early 1993. And yeah, in terms of compact Macintoshes, this is probably the top of my list. Yeah, I don't know. I've just <laughs> always been fond of this. Who isn't? I don't know. Not too many people. There's some folks that find this ugly. I find it charming. I don't know. It's a very cute machine. I don't actually like the style as much as I do like the very original Mac, but still, it's pretty great. It's got a lot of nostalgic memories of seeing these mostly in libraries schools and things. Yeah. In fact, I believe the first time I came across this was in one of the public libraries in Forsyth County. I don't remember which one exactly. It might have been the Walkertown branch. I know they opened in like late 1992, so it might not have been that one, but they had a bunch of Macs there. And uh, yeah, this particular era is just <laughs> super appealing to me. And I've got yeah, several black and white compact Max, but none like this. You got this delightful little 10 inch Sony Trinitron display. And, uh, you know, I've, I've actually never had the chance to get one until this. Like, it's funny, I was actually just looking. Yeah, there's some things that have been done to it. We'll get to that. <laughs> Ethernet, what in the world? Uh, but yeah, I was actually just looking on eBay again, seriously, last week after watching uh, Action Retro, he did a video on his channel and like the, the unmodified version of it, how much it kind of sucks. It's infamous for being highly appealing to look at and the fact that it's a compact Mac with a color display and all that. But internally, they're very uh, infamous for just being kind of sucky with 68030 and specs that were similar to something like the Mac SE30, I believe, but that was from the late 80s, and this was early 93. By then, it was really outdated, and I ran a, uh, you know, a lot of stuff pretty slowly compared to what you would hope for for the time period and how much it cost and all that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so Robert got in touch. He said, hey, I've got one of these, and it's just been sitting around for a couple years collecting dust, not being used. Do you want it? And I'm like, uh, yeah, dude, absolutely. Are you sure, though? Because... If you looked at eBay <laughs> or, you know, any of the like Mac reselling groups and forums, these things go for a bit, especially one in this configuration. And this is what is known as a mystic, I believe. Yeah. It's got the, uh, an, an LC575 logic board swap along with some other upgrades, which is pretty cool. Actually, the very first classic Mac, like 68K Mac that I ever got. And in many ways, I prefer that machine, but it's a lot bigger, it's a lot chunkier, it's a lot t uglier in a way. Yeah, it's just a bulbous weird thing, but it's, you know, it's got a bigger screen. I think it's a 13 inch maybe, maybe a 14, and CD-ROM is built in, a bunch of cool stuff. But it's, you know, the form factor and the, the relative smallness of this that makes it so appealing. And so uh, huge thank you to Robert for offering this. It's extremely, extremely generous. I, I seriously had to double check. I'm like, are you sure you want to just give this to me? And not just this, but a whole bunch of stuff. Let's go through the stuff really quick. And then I'm going to uh, open it up. We're going to take a look at the board. I don't know if it's actually been recapped or anything. I don't know what's been done to it, except that it's been cut apart somewhat in the back to fit like an ethernet expansion card. <laughs> uh, but I do know that it's supposed to be a Mystic upgrade with the 575 board in there, which is probably gonna mean it's a 33 megahertz um, 68 LC040 processor. I don't know, Let's see what we got. Okay, so we have an Apple Keyboard 2 classic ADB option. I quite like this, I've always enjoyed the design there with the sort of cutouts on the side where you plug in, yeah, mouse and keyboard. That's awesome. And I believe that's what actually the machine came with too, I think. 
I've always been kind of more fond of the, um, the Apple IIGS era, the, the earlier one, but that's okay. It doesn't, I mean, it wouldn't really match this machine, so that's beside the point. Um, and, uh, yeah, good old uh, classic ADB mouse, of course. Single button dealio. Yeah, a bunch of other stuff in here is kind of boring, just power cords. But, you know, it's all useful. Cables for things, looks like SCSI, power cord. Yeah, there's a CD-ROM in here, too. Uh, more SCSI cables, more power cables. Yeah, I was intrigued by this. Wow, this is a long one, or a <laughs> deep one, I guess. I don't actually know what this is uh, exactly, other than it being a CD-ROM. Let's see what... Uh, it's a Micronet. ADVMM4X6. Interesting. SCSI external CD-ROM. How cool is that? That's awesome. Don't have too many of these external ones. Uh, there's also a box of Mac formatted three and a half inch floppies. Don't know if there's anything on these. Could very well be. Nice. Got a Centronix style SCSI Terminator there. Uh, more After Dark. Volume one on floppy disk. Uh, After Dark. Just the OG version, sweet. Some add-on modules, classic ones. Star Trek screensaver modules. After Dark things, oh, totally twisted. After Dark screensaver. That one's kind of fun. And After Dark classic on CD-ROM. See, this is like the later one that came out, I think before After Dark 4.0, maybe after After Dark 4.0, don't remember. Sort of a re-release of uh, after Dark, but anyway. Awesome, awesome. Always welcome. Love After Dark. And lastly, other than the cables that are down there, we've got an unlabeled uh, <laughs> 3D printed box with a SCSI connection on that end and uh, looks like micro SD and micro USB. As well as this right here, which is another SCSI adapter of some kind. A SCSI 2SD sort of thing. Uh, Robert didn't actually know either. <laughs> I think that he, yeah, it's SCSI 2SD. That's exactly what it is. Version 5.0B. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if he'd actually ever used these or if these just came with them when he got the machine. So he got it a couple years ago from someone on eBay. And it had been like refurbished or whatever and kind of half restored sort of by the seller. Uh, but he didn't really know what had been done to it. And I guess he just didn't end up using it very much. And it was just sort of sitting there in his game room as like a nice decoration. So let's get the machine logic board out and see what that looks like. See, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I really am assuming that that's like another SCSI 2SD, uh, yeah, SCSI 2SD just in an external enclosure there and a different style SCSI connector. That's pretty awesome though. I've never seen it configured like that. All the other ones I have look quite different. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah. So we don't actually even know if this works. Um, he said that it did the last time it was powered on, but that was like two some years ago. So famous last words, right? You never know. <laughs> yeah, look at that cut out. This whole thing has been cut out and modified. I guess that's part of the mystical fying process. I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure. I've never looked into that too much. And I was honestly just looking for one of these that was stock. And then I could do the mystic upgrade myself. But hey, it's already been done. And I guess now I'll just be kind of looking out for a, a stock motherboard. Because if I do a video on this, I'd like to show what it was like originally and then with... Ooh. Ooh, what in, the, what in the world? Anyway, I was saying I'd like to show this uh, before and after, but I don't actually have an original classic, uh, color classic motherboard. I have a Mac classic. I don't have a color classic motherboard. I do have this though. So it's uh, dusty, but otherwise looking okay. This interesting battery situation though. This looks... <laughs> At least it's not leaking. I'll say that much. <laughs> like the uh, the dual RAM situation too. Definitely saw that in a lot of 
machines for a short period in time as they were transitioning from one to the other. Could be like uh, 16 megs, maybe 20, I don't know. So yeah, there is uh, the expected processor. A 68LC040RC33. So that's, I think, what the LC575 originally had. And you can upgrade a bit. Yeah, there's a bunch of things you can do to this. Those caps, though, are looking pretty standard to me. I'm, I'm look, I'm, it's hard to tell with the grime uh, if there's any leakage. But yeah, those surface mount electrolytics. Yeah, dude. There's some under here, too. They're looking pretty stock, though. I, I'm not seeing any evidence of uh, soldering of any kind. There is, like, some grossness hanging around. Generally all over. Like, look, look at this. What is that? I don't know if that's, like, uh... No, it's on this side, too. Yeah, look at this. Like, right around the processor area. See all this? Crustiness. So something's been going on. I was going to say that almost looks like really old thermal paste, but there's no, there would, I don't, can't imagine no other reason for that to have any, because you don't have a cooling solution on this. Yeah, it's very possible there's some leakage going on. Uh, I will say that I'm going to get this thing recapped no matter what. I might, uh, I'll probably test it here today just real quick to see if it does anything, but, you know. There's no sense not getting this recapped. I need to get my LC575 recapped as well, so maybe I'll get them done at the same time. Hey, look at that. So we have a Sante Tech networking card from 1993. Yeah, pretty neat, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's awesome. Just the weirdness around there. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely needs a good ultrasonic cleaning or something, which I don't have the equipment to do that. However, I know that Steve from the YouTube channel Mac84 does, and he's actually already offered to help me out with like, uh, yeah, doing repairs and, and cleaning. And, you know, he, he offers some services. So I'm probably going to pay him to help take care of that. You know, I mean, I could do it myself, but it's a matter of like, not only the time and the skill, but also just the equipment and the expertise and all that kind of stuff which he definitely has. I know he has all the cleaning things and, and like a microscope. He goes over the traces and all this stuff, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, some of that's pretty nasty, dude. <laughs> it's an interesting battery. Uh, let's go ahead and just get this powered on and uh, yeah, see if it does anything at all. Yeah, it's working on this IBM. This seems like a good spot for a Macintosh test. Uh, anyway. Hey, hey, all right. Well, that's a good sign. We get ourselves a bong. And fans and stuff. Come on, display. Okay. You can do it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, just a little... A little slow warming up, that's all right. Ah, nice. Nice! Well, that is a background. <laughs> ah, I see the After Dark extension loading up. Some version of it. Mouse works. <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> August 27th, 1956. So yeah, I'll probably just swap out that uh, PRAM battery completely. I've got a few of those that take like triple A's and double A's, you know, different versions, whatever. Maybe use one of those or a direct replacement if I can find it. Who knows? Anyway. Dude, good stuff so far. I've got 30, 36 megs of RAM, I guess. Yeah. System 7.5. Awesome. Hey, yeah, just a couple things here butting in from the future. Uh, <laughs> the memory, it didn't have 32-bit addressing enabled. Uh, now I do, just I probably got turned off because of uh, the battery coming undone. But anyway, whatever, got full 36 megs. 
which I think is the onboard maximum for this particular motherboard until you like get really large uh, memory modules. But those are hard to find, so I don't even know if I have those. And yeah, the other thing is that, what am I looking for? Monitors. Yeah, this does not, I don't think, have the 640 by 480 either mod or uh, there's a few different ways to do it. Extensions, there's logic board stuff, there's analog board stuff. So what it was on, and what you're going to see for the rest of this footage after this, it was on 560 by 384. I'll put it back down to 512 by 384. Looks better to me, and um, it's fine. I actually don't see myself going to 640 by 480 on a screen this small. Like, it's just, it's so small. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, I think that's about it. Uh, anyway, back to the blurb. After Dark 4.0. <laughs> A whole ton of modules installed. Wow, look at all those. Nice. Yeah, flying toasters. Oh, could not be opened. What? Well, <laughs> I'd probably just be wiping this thing clean anyway and just going from scratch. Typically what I do with a new to me machine, so that's fine. Let's see, where is the, uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> switch away from these these teddy bears. Yeah, you know, your your classic patterns here. I don't know. That one's fine, I guess. No, it's not. I don't like it. I like this one. Yeah, sure, whatever. Anyway, yeah, it looks it looks great. Like in terms of the display, yeah, dude. Really nice and sharp. I cannot even remember the last time I saw a Color Classic in person, like, powered on like this. Seriously, it might have been almost 30 years. Because of the machines I'm thinking of that were back at one of the libraries growing up, that would have been like 93, maybe 94. <laughs> Had Sim Ant on there, Oregon Trail Deluxe, and I think Kid Desk, I want to say Kid Desk. Dude. We're bringing back some memories just seeing this. This is awesome. I'm glad it works. At least it seems to. So far, let me test the... Uh... Yeah, the notepad. Let's see here. I'm a little off-center here. <laughs> Behind the camera. Uh. Yeah, this works great, dude. That's awesome. So, dude, everything's working. Nice. Much approved. I got totally twisted on here. <laughs> it's just a manual. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty base, like really base installation of OS 7.5. So not much going on there at all. Just fine. This is, <laughs> oh, this is so cool, man. Seriously, thanks again to uh, Robert for uh, <laughs> donating this. I mean, holy crap, this is so cool. <laughs> it's such a neat little machine. I love the way it looks. It's just the whole form factor and the size and the cute little microphone, little buttons, oh, man. And a little QuickTime logo that's down there on the sticker in the corner. It's like, ooh, multimedia. Even more so with the uh, 575 motherboard in there, dude. Yeah, definitely want to get that logic board recapped or whatever. But, like, I'm not seeing wobbliness or weirdness with the with the analog uh, board. Like, the geometry is a little wonky, but... I mean, you know, it's fine, really. I don't have any complaints just looking at it right here. It does look like there may be some burn-in in the background. It's hard for me to tell, because it's probably just burned in for, uh, like, what Mac OS is. Uh, other thing I would have tested... I actually do have that external SCSI CD-ROM attached, so uh, I want to see if that works. Power it on. Okay, nice. And I got totally twisted here, so whatever, I'll just try it. That's convenient. Never actually used an external CD-ROM SCSI drive like this on an old Mac. All the classic Macs I have have internal CD-ROMs, or they don't have one at all. <laughs> or it's like a later one, like a G3 or G4 or G5 or any of those. So, don't really know uh, what we gotta do in terms of setting it up. Hmm. 
just double check. It should have the extensions for SCSI, right? I mean, it's got the hard drive in there. It's got to. Yeah, we got SCSI, SCSI, SCSI Manager 4.3, so... Let me double check the SCSI ID on the back because it does have a little meter. Yeah, no, it's, it's set to a valid ID. Let me uh, just restart. Who knows? It might not be able to, like, hot swap or hot, like, because I powered it on after the computer was already on. Yeah, you see a little bit of the burn in there? Just a little bit. It's faint, but it's there. So, not not a perfect display. And there are, like, slight little, those are, like, scratchy gouges. Just little bits of it. Eh. Whatever. Can't complain. Hey! Got a CD! Nice. Yeah, I think, I, think I think it's already installed, but whatever. Just see if it opens up. Yeah, dude. Nice. So that's working. Good, good, good. Hmm. Alright. Uh, of course, I also want to test the... Uh, Floppy drive real quick, just to see, like mainly the eject, because that can be a bit of a thing. Uh, yeah, floppy disk here I was using on the PS2 earlier, so it'll be DOS formatted, but it should still be readable. And it is. Nice. A ball fart. <laughs> probably not gonna, yeah, it's not going to be able to do that either. I'm going to copy things off there, though. Dude, awesome. Let's see about the ejecting. Oh yeah, sounds nice and strong. So this is uh, this is pretty great. Not really any complaints at all, except that just you know preventative measures and like making sure things are good in terms of the logic board, getting that recapped and cleaned up, dude. Dude, dude, I'm excited. This is awesome. Uh, once again, thanks to Rob. This is so cool. I don't really have anything else to show right here because I don't have any Mac and stuff, uh, Mac and stuff, Macintosh stuff nearby to test. I'd have to go over to my other place and get some things out of there, but, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is cool. This is super cool. Thanks for watching this blurb. Isn't it neat? Look at this. <laughs> yeah.